I remember telling my parents I wanted to be a poet when I was a literature major. And uh, I mean, it's your parents' worst nightmare, second only to being an artist, right? No, I studied psychology. I graduated in the psychology department. I think the biggest influence on my work was the fact that I grew up as a small child, knowing my dad had been a Disney animator and having him with a, a nude model right next to my bedroom when I was five years old. And I could peek in and I could see my mother sitting here like this and, and, uh, and him painting. And I could smell the turpentine fumes. So I always had kind of a, a, a lust and a passion for the art. I just didn't feel when I would bring it up to my parents that it was very um, uh, admired by them. And so, I mean, I really probably went into psychology not to disappoint my parents. And when I went through the whole thing, I go, oh my God, I don't want to be a psychologist. But I do care about the human condition and so I started going back to art, and from the very first second I was beating the drum about the human condition was the reason that I took psychology in the first place. What I really felt when I draw somebody is that everything that I wanted to learn in, in psychology was really, I didn't want to learn it linearly, intellectually, judgingly. I just wanted to sit in, some, in front of somebody and put that pen in the, in, the, in the ink well and draw them. And I felt like something amazing happened where that person wasn't themselves and I wasn't myself like we were suspended where I could feel uh, something uh, about what, what I really wanted out of psychology. So every chance I got to draw somebody, I took that opportunity. And, and so I ended up doing my master's degree at Cal State Long Beach with a pro quill pen and drawing the homeless and the prisoners. It was really, really important for me. I remember Toulouse-Lautrec said, I have no talent unless I'm the person I'm painting is, uh, is, 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 is a interest, something I can take, you know? Me too, I have zero talent if, just to sit down and do a portrait of somebody. So I almost need somebody to be, have lines and have a history and have something before I even have, have anything to, to feel, to say. And, and so I would call it drawing by feel, sculpting by feel, composing by feel. A few years ago, felt that I was missing the experience that I had when I was doing my, my double master's degree and going to prison and doing the homeless people on the street. I felt so real, you know, when I was doing that. And I felt that it was the best, uh, most real art that I'd ever done. And, and then I just felt I could, from some dreams, I felt really, really badly about myself that I'd kind of become sort of some bourgeois teacher and becoming more about you know uh, dressing for work and, and, and impressing my students and and I felt like I was killing my art in a way so I voluntarily I decided to, to do a, a series on homeless people downtown and I and in the beginning I'm going you know what when I was younger I would have been crying my eyes out and now I'm just kind of feeling a little anesthetized and cold. It's going to take me a while. But by the time after months had happened and I interviewed people and I got their stories and I would draw them and I would sit with them, I started getting my, my soul back, my compassion back. So I, I think if probably if I am to talk about a turning point in my life, 
is, is that I lost my ability to be real after I'd graduated. And so I started really realizing that I needed to get back to where I'm, I'm, I'm working with people who have something um, that's uncomfortable, to me uncomfortable, because my life was getting more comfortable. It's not like I'm this crying person that's, uh, that's so breaking my heart, I, I, a little bit, I, I have to admit, you know, but over other people's suffering. But I'm also, I have a selfish side that, that I'm looking, I'm looking for something really, really uh, that, that's passionate, that, I can, that I'm curious about and that I can almost be a voyeur into the pain of another person's life. It sounds terrible. And I find myself getting very much uh, into their lives and involved with their lives. Um, but, but my point is that with my work, I'm always showing a duality. I'm looking at the most horrible thing a human being can be, you know, and then the most angelic thing a person can be. And I really don't even want to judge. I don't want to tell anybody it's good or bad. I'm just looking as if I'm, I, I'm an alien from outer space. I come down and I look and these people are suffering. Rafma probably was the most um, well orchestrated exhibition um, I ever had. And it was also a wonderful experience to be able to see other people and how they react to the work. And I tell you, this is a very curious thing and it's hard for you to believe, but I don't feel like I did the work. I feel like, I really feel like this alien I'm walking around. I don't feel like I'm the artist. I never do. I don't even remember doing that work. But I'm, I'm, I'm watching the people and then I'm, and I'm seeing they're reacting to my work and I look at the work and I go, and almost I'm looking at it for the first time and I'm kind of reacting to the work too for the first time. Watching the people and seeing their reaction is a beautiful thing because you get to be a brand new baby, fresh student learning from scratch, you know what I mean? Right at that moment when you're seeing people react and going, wow, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. And so as a result of it, um, it kind of gives you a larger base to, to pull from uh, experientially. of the paintings that I have, I can actually go back and see that they just started with, with kind of an, an emotion and a scribble. Imagine a scribble that was the um, electroencephalogram of your, you know what I mean, of feeling what your emotions are. You know? For example, I, I could do, I, would, I did a scribble on, on humanity in crisis and I could feel, uh, and at that time what was uh, driving me is this all of California was burning and all of the beetles were eating the, the trees and all of Arrowhead and it was burning. And so I was really, really anxious. And so out of that anxiety, I was making scribble of humanity in crisis. And then I could look and see in that scribble that I could, that I could see a human being. And then I, I made another line of scribble, but I brought the human being down. You could see the, the, the human beings being brought down and brought down and brought down and brought down and, until finally uh, I almost have the whole composition done. Um, I think a need has arrived in me in this period of my life because I've done so many uh, murals that are uh, 15 feet and then one when you put them together and you walk along are 40 feet. And I just started feeling I'm just repeating it over and over again. And I, and, and I fell so in love with the three-dimensional physicality of, of the clay. The other part was, is that, um, that I started doing the murals because I noticed that if I, if, as long as I'm painting, I can't get depressed about anything. Well, the murals could keep me 
dan dancing sugar plum fairies of imagination for six months for one year so I so I could just pass on I, I never go into sadness because I could always I could always live in that world well the sculpture is like a thousand times worse I mean I'm talking about three or four thousand hours on a piece probably because of my lack of talent you know what I mean the one thing that I discovered what which 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 holds my attention is that as I'm working that I start looking at the, 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 the roughed in shape, I can start to see by putting my thumb in that there's a muscle and how do I know the anatomy so well? So I went to my former student, Ray Bustos, eight years in a, in a row, eight o'clock in the morning, every summer, like a little kid, making the écorché model out of this clay. So it was really, it all came from that. And I just started falling in, I mean, like the pronating muscles of the arm. Oh my God, I could live to be a thousand years old and I could never really understand it. One of my students saw a drawing I was doing in, in the class and he said, wow, you really know your anatomy. I go, no, no, no. He knows, I'm according to the teacher, he knows the anatomy. I feel the anatomy. That the more I look, the more I see, and I'm seeing things that I think are impossible to see, and the fact that every single part of the human figure not only flows in one into the other, but expresses something. Every detail expresses something. You know, shocks you, shocks you, shocks you, shocks you, and flows together and creates this orchestration of emotional layering of responses. And as an artist, and I can tell you the greatest thing about being an artist and devoting your life to it, even though you're gonna be the poorest devil you ever met, that you create an interior parallel world. When you look at something in your external environment and you touch it and you feel it, you're literally sculpting it with your pen or your pencil and you're feeling it. You do that as a devotion for your entire life to feel the world you live in. You will create a feeling world of an interior parallel world that will be the gift of your life. And there's nothing more um, tactile than sculpture. I used to tell my students, the highest thing you can become is a composer. So let's make sure that you don't move your arms in a clumsy, stiff way because you need to be able to, you know, wax on, wax off, be able to, to compose things so everything will flow together, you see. And later I asked if I could come back uh, during my master's degree and, um, and draw the prisoners. My companion who was in the psychology clinical class at uh, Long Beach, uh, was the head of the confiscation room said, uh, do you want the doors open or closed? And first I go, I go closed, <laughs> I want them closed. But I couldn't see the light was coming in and I started to make friends with these guys, you know, how do you want me to hold, you know, the, on the bars, you know, the prison bar, you know, and I go, that looks good. I remember one night working on that big head and I'm, I start on four o'clock in the morning and I'm talking. Uh, to, I'm going, oh my God, this form is so beautiful. My little dog stick is, her nose in it. And then I go, and I say to her, I go, I go, come on in and join us. And I'm going, did I say us? You know, that maybe. <laughs> Talks too much. Talks too much. The most emotional impact. And so, I mean, I had the, I had those kind of talon-like feet that are now much more elegant, but that, but they didn't express anything, you know? That's why I don't even refer to the anatomy book or anything, or models or anything, because, because it, it's about making, if, 
it's about looking at it and seeing what it's what it's feeling like, you know, and then just make that feeling stronger. <laughs>